Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 39 of Learn Lightroom 5. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the histogram. Today I received an email from someone asking me to do this video. And that's when I realized I never really did a video just on the histogram, what it is and how you could use it to process your images. So I'd like to ask all of you, if you have any ideas on videos you'd like me to do, feel free to email me at Tony at AnthonyMorganti.com and I'll see what I could do. All right, the histogram is available in the library module and the develop module of Lightroom, but we're mainly going to be talking about it in the develop module because in the library module it's just there for show. You really can't do it, um, use it to manipulate your image. Now it's in the right hand panel and if you don't see it you could click on this little expose triangle and it will open up the uh, histogram panel. Also, if you go to Window, Panels, and down here to Histogram, you could toggle it open and close. If you have a PC, you could use the shortcut keys Control-0, a Mac it would be Command-0, and that will toggle it open and closed. All right, now, I actually did this video a couple times, and I think I was getting too technical when I was explaining what the histogram is. And, you know, as photographers, we don't have to know all the nuts and bolts of these things. So I'm going to be a little more superficial, I think, when I explain what the histogram is. And um, I think it will <laughs> help people watch the video right to the end instead of turning it off partway through. Really, all the histogram is, though, is a plot on a kind of a graph of every single pixel in the image. And if you have more of that exact pixel in the image, you'll get a higher spike. Now the, the histogram in Lightroom is broken down into the three composite colors, that is red, green, and blue. And you can see they're different colored uh, on the histogram. There's green there, there's red there, blue there. So we have green, red, and blue. And um, you can see there's gray there too. And what the gray is is a composite of those three uh, colors. So it's kind of an average. So we could see that every pixel gets plotted on the graph and the red pixels get plotted, the green pixels get plotted, and the blue pixels get plotted. Now you tend to not have a pixel in here that is a hundred percent red usually or one that's a hundred percent blue or one that's a hundred percent green. So what it does it uses percentages and as I move my cursor over the image. If you look under here right now it says ISO 118 millimeters F13 1 60th of a second. But if I hover over a pixel you can see right now it's showing that that pixel is 49.6 percent red, 52.8 percent green, and 71 percent blue. Now it doesn't add up to a hundred. It's more than a hundred and I'm not going to explain that because it gets too technical but basically what you got to know is that's the percentages of those colors represented on the graph by that pixel. Now the layout of the histogram left to right is on the left are the blacks, on the uh, just to the right of that are the shadows, just past that is what they're calling exposure. I think in older versions of Lightroom it was called midtones so that would make sense, right? We go to the right a little more and it's highlights and then to the far right is whites. Now also as I slide across here you could see that different parts of this are kind of lighting up a lighter gray uh, going across the, um, the histogram. Also if you look down here different sliders become active. So when I'm in the shadows area, the shadow slider is active. When I'm in the exposure area, the exposure shadow is active and highlights and whites, just like that. So if I go down here and I'm going to move the highlights, you could see that part of the histogram becomes active. And that is actually the part I'm more, I guess, more so, manipulating more so than any other part is right in here now when I move the highlights around. So that gives you an idea where you're affecting the pixels. These pixels that are considered highlight pixels are the ones that are getting uh, manipulated when you move the slider. Now I don't just, I, I could obviously move this slider but I could go right up here to the histogram and click down on my left mouse button 
when I do the cursor disappears. So right now I'm clicking down with the left mouse button and I'm dragging it to the left and you can see the highlight slider is moving to the left and if I drag to the right the highlight slider is moving to the right. So it gives you an idea of how this works. How these sliders manipulate different parts of the histogram which actually are manipulating those exact pixels that the histogram is representing when you move these sliders. Now the main reason or the main thing we'll use the histogram for as photographers is to see if we have any shadows clipping or we have any highlights clipping. And what clipping means is that you're making something so absolute that it has no detail in it. In the case of shadows, if you're clipping shadows, that means it's absolute black. There's no detail in it. If you're clipping whites, that means it's absolute white and you have no detail in it anymore. So there might be times where you want clipping. If you're photographing a polar bear in a snowstorm, you're going to have a lot of whites and you're going to have a lot of white out. So you're going to have clipping. So you're going to have this histogram is going to be way over here to the right and it's going to be just piled up on that way and you're going to have a lot of clipping white. If you're taking um, a photograph of a black Labrador Retriever at night, you're going to have a lot of clipping of the shadows. So the histogram is going to be way over here to the left and you're going to have a lot of uh, clipping of those blacks. And that's natural. And that I should add, I get a lot of people asking me, what's a good histogram? Well, there really is no right or wrong histogram. There is none that are that is good or one is bad necessarily. Um, it's really your own personal taste and the scene is, is going to dictate how the histogram looks. So if you are photographing a polar bear in a snowstorm, the histogram is going to be piled up to the right. That's just the way it is. And that doesn't make it wrong. That's just the way the scene is. Um, so don't worry about if your histogram is really you know doesn't look like you think it should like it should be like a bell-shaped curve or anything like that it's really scene dependent now it's back to the clipping for a minute as I mentioned the main reason why we're using the histogram is to see if we're clipping the shadows or clipping the whites now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna process this image like I normally do so my exposure is fine. I usually start there, but this is exposed okay. So I'm going to bring highlights down, and I'm going to bring it down just enough till I see some detail in the marble. So it's just pure by taste right now. And I'm going to open up the shadows a little bit so I see a little bit more detail in Abraham Lincoln's face of the statue, okay? Now I'm going to set my white and black point by holding the Alt or Option key. It's Alt if you have a PC option if you have a Mac, oops, and I'm going to click down on the whites and I'm going to move it to the right and you can see how that starts to come through. Well, I'm going to back it off. I like to back off my whites usually till there's just about none there. That's my personal taste. And with the blacks I'm going to do that similarly with that Alt or Option key and I'm going to click down on that and I'm going to move it to the left. And I usually leave the blacks a little more so, so a little more blacks. Now I'm going to bring clarity up like I typically would a little bit. I might add just a tiny bit of vibrance and I would add just a little contrast. Alright, so I'm done with the basic panel. This is where I might check clipping. And how you would do that is you would go up to the histogram and you can see there's two triangles in the corners. And if I hover over this left one, that's for shadows. And when I hover over it, you're going to see a lot of that picture just has blue on it now. So I have blue all through here, back in here, and around in here. So we're going to hover over that triangle and you can see that blue. What that is showing, it's indicating to me that that is absolute black. That's just no detail whatsoever. It's totally black in those areas. Now, a lot of if you have big swaths of your image that are black, you probably don't want that because when you print it, you're not going to print any detail. You're just going to throw a lot of black ink down on the printer or on the paper and it won't look right. So just um, you might want to back it off then. So what you could do is you could click on this triangle and it will leave them on. See it left the blue on. Now I could go up here and I might want to um, brighten up my highlights a little more or shadows, I'm sorry, brighten up my shadows a little more and maybe brighten up my blacks a little more. 
Now it's okay to have a little bit clip that adds depth to the shot. So if you have a little bit that's clipped black and a little bit that's clipped white, that's okay. It, it really does add, add depth to the shot and your image doesn't look as flat. So if you do, you know, it's a good test though just to see if you have anything clipping. Now you could go up here and hit this triangle again to turn it off. Also, you could toggle those triangles on and off by hitting the J key on your keyboard and it will toggle them both on or off at the same time. So you can see I do not have any um, whites clipping. So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to actually click down on that right hand um, a triangle which would show me my highlights that are clipping and I don't have any. So let's artificially uh, produce some. So I'm going to go over to whites and I'm going to turn white up. And now you can see it turned red. So whenever you have any whites that are clipping, it'll be red. So um, the blacks or shadows will be blue and the whites will be red. And that'll give you an idea of what's clipping and what isn't. And remember you could turn those on and off by hitting the J key. So you might want it on and I could come in here and I could take my whites down until I just don't have any clipping. I still have a tiny bit of clipping here, see? So we're going to go until we just get rid of all that clipping, let's say. And that's okay to my personal taste. So I could hit the J key again and it will turn the clipping indicators off. All right, now that's really, as photographers, what we usually use the histogram for. Now I'm going to show you one more thing. If you're into printing your own images and you need to get lab values. Now I don't know much about this because I don't print my own images, but it's real easy to get what they're calling lab values. As you go over the histogram and you right click on it and a little menu pops up. And you could go down here and show lab color values. Now now look at the bottom of the image when I hover over any pixel it's not showing R, G, and B anymore it's showing L, A, and B and these are the lab values that you may need when you're printing an image so that just gives you that idea of you know that or that know-how of how to get these lab values you then could go right over here and you could right click again and just click reset and it will reset everything to you know the to what it should be let me turn those lab values off. And uh, then you could get RG and B, see? Okay, so if you ever, um, you know, want to, what that does, I'm sorry, I, 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 I uh, was talking faster than I was thinking. Uh, when you do reset all, what it's doing is it's resetting all these sliders uh, back to the middle. It's, it's these ones right in here. So it's going to reset all those. Those are the sliders that are represented in the um, histogram. So if you um, if you just want to you know reset them that way instead of double clicking on them to reset them. So you know we have the highlights over here, the shadows over here, and you just want to reset them. You could re you know double click on them. Well, the other way to do it. So I apologize about being so herky jerky here. Is you could just right click here and just click reset all and it brings them all back to the middle. So I apologize, I got a little confusing there, but like I said, I was thinking ahead of what I was going to say and not thinking about what I was saying right at that moment. So I hope that all made sense. I tried to simplify it a little bit because I did a video before where I got into exactly what the RGB values meant and, and all that stuff, and then I thought to myself, us photographers really don't got to know that. We really just got to know clipping and why we're using the histogram. Uh, to show clipping and how to toggle it on and toggle it off. So that's it. I do appreciate everyone watching my videos. Thank you very much. If you guys have any questions about anything, send me an email. I get a lot of email. It might take me a couple days to answer, but uh, feel free to send me an email. And again, if you have suggestions on videos you'd like me to do, send the email to Tony at AnthonyMorganti.com and I'll see what I could do. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon.